All right, so what you see in the vise is called a pertigan. What is a pertigan? Uh, a pertigan is, well, it's actually exactly, it's exactly what you see. They were developed by the uh, Spanish uh, fly fishing team. And they were designed to be tied quickly, match any color of, uh, like, nymph in the water, and dive like a missile. Uh, I'm actually going to do another video kind of going over different materials, so on and so forth, that you can use for a protagon. But, uh, you know, I've tried to shoot this video a couple t <laughs> couple times now and explain everything. And it ends up being like 35 minutes. And it's like, uh, let's just do a separate video. Uh, they're... They're designed to be tied very, very quickly. Oh, and of course, I just dropped that flight. There it is. Uh, but they're designed to be tied very, very quickly. Uh, and you can, again, you can use a host of uh, materials. So what we're going to be using here on this video <clears throat> is a lightning strike NW1 size 16 times one short uh, hook. It's got the sprout bend, which can actually cause a lot of problems sometimes with putting beads on. Uh, so what we're going to do here, uh, since it's a, such a small hook, I'm going to show you a quick way to get your hook set in the vise and get your bead on. So I'm going to turn it just like that. The bead that I'm pairing with it, uh, for the video anyway, is a Cyclops 332nd. I'm size 16. You'll see that's the number in the middle. Uh, I'll, I'll cover that on a different video and go over some of this uh, again because I try to do I try to do it all at the same time and it just ended up being too much, too long for being a short, quick tie. So what you need to do is get your uh, get your bead and you want the small end of the bead and we're just going to slip that right on top of the hook or the point just like so and drop it on if you need to and you've got bigger fingers one trick that I've seen people do I don't do it myself I probably will have to at some point uh, is get some tweezers uh, and glue super glue some uh, like two millimeter craft foam to the tweezers uh, so that you can that it can grab the bead if you try to do it with just metal metal to metal becomes very slick uh, and it can be it can be a challenge. So when you're pulling this off, just make sure you kind of grab it by the hook point so the bead doesn't come off. And just you know, you're going like this. Just slide it up. You can kind of grab everything. Oop, out of camera. Sorry. And we can now just put that in the vise, like so. Maybe. You do want to kind of have it sitting flat though, I suppose. That'd be good, huh? Oh, I'm aiming down a little bit. It's always so much more difficult to do it with a camera in front of me. Boom. There we go. So, uh, these are, like I said, these are meant to be quick ties. So, uh, what we're using here is Unithread 8.0, and we're just going to kind of get rocking here just to show the basics of how to build a Pertigun. Now, what I'm going to do on this particular pattern is I'm going to get a decent amount of thread out of the uh, out of the tip of the bob and I've got about oh I don't know about four and a half inches maybe five inches and I'm going to start my thread right behind the bead and I'm going to just start making turns uh, 10 15 20 somewhere in there and we're just gonna just build it up just a little bit so we have this big long tag uh, it can kind of get in your way so if you have a way to uh, get it out of your way on your vise, <clears throat> whether it's a material clip or, uh, you know, sometimes even just licking the, uh, your thread and then trying to stick it along the metal will work fine for a while. Uh, so I'm going to take my tag, I'm going to drop it underneath to the bottom side of the shank, and I'm going to methodically work back, touching turns, and we're going to take this to about the barb so when I let that go and hang down I'm kind of just on the front side of the barb <clears throat> and that's that's pretty much good enough don't go into the bend I'll go a couple more wraps just to get it there perfect 
uh, and I'll kind of move this to the back side or whichever side you need to get it out of the way. Next for tailing material, oh, I'm just going to use a biot. You you don't even need a tailing material on on Pertagons. Uh, I'm just going to use a biot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the back side of the biot, and I'm just going to kind of pop one out, pull it off. Biots have a concave side and a convex side, just meaning there's a, you know, there's a little, uh, there's a curvature to the actual feather. There's a side that has a hump. There's a side that's indented. Uh, the side that's indented is the concave side. The top side would be the convex side. Uh, you don't want these tails to be longer than, uh, well, how do I explain this? So from behind the bead to where my thread is now, that should be the absolute longest you want this tail. Right there. Uh, for most people, that's going to be probably pretty long. Uh, so you can actually, uh, so anywhere in between there is fine. And so you can actually decide whether or not you want the concave side down or the convex side down. The only difference is, is if the concave side down, meaning the little lump is facing down, uh, is that the tail will angle down or potentially angle down just a little bit. And if you flip it over, the tail might be facing up just a little bit, just kind of like you see there. You can choose either one. Uh, there's really not a right or wrong here, especially using a biot. Uh, the standard, uh, well, I had one, yeah, so the standard tail on a Pertagon is a Coke de Leon or a CD, CDL. Uh, so we're not, we're not going to use that on this one. We're just going to use a little biot, uh, which is fine. So I'm just going to get my distance on what I want, and I'm going to go about half the distance. And it can be a little tricky. And you kind of just got to work it up there and get it on top the best you can. And we're going to put two loose wraps in. You can kind of see mine's all wonky. All right, with two loose wraps, I can move it to the top like so. And now I've got my little tail sticking out back. And again, this is to show you how to build a basic pertagon. I'm going to actually shorten that tail very simply. If your biots are too long, as long as you do loose wraps, you can just pull. You can just take it and pull it. Well, take it and pull it to the distance that you want, right? So I'll undo that and I'll do it again. But uh, you can do that. You can do that with double tails too. So I'm actually just using my fingernail here to kind of hold that in place. One loose wrap, two loose wraps. Checking it out. That one came out kind of short. If you do it too many times, you may have to get a new biot. What'll happen is you'll start to get these little breaks in the biot. So if you have to do it more than three times, you may just have to go ahead and get a new biot. So again, for the third time, I'm just going to lay it right on top. Use my thumbnail to hold it down. Just do one loose wrap two loose wraps, kind of position it, and you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get a new one that had a little break in it, so if that happens to you, don't worry about it, just go get a new biot, it's not a big deal. And again, we want it about half the distance. Oh, well, that's where I want it. You want it somewhere in between the two, from the back of the bead to the barb. So now I'm going to do one, two, right on top. There we go. Now, as I work my thread forward, I want touching turns. You know, really methodically go through this part. Touching turns and tight or increasingly tight, progressively tight as you work forward. Now, before you get all the way to the bead, stop, 
so that you have a little gap there. Now you can bring in your scissors. On small stuff like this, I like to get my fingernail clippers and come in and just trim that guy out. I think fingernail clippers work great here, uh, but your scissors, your scissors will work good too as long as you have a little bit of a gap. And we're just gonna wrap forward to right behind the right behind the bead. Uh, so what I'm going to use for the body here, uh, and again I'll cover this in more detail in another in a separate video, is I'm going to use some pearl uh, tinsel, small flat pearl tinsel, and we don't need a whole lot here. Um, I would say if you get two and a half inches out, that's probably plenty. Um, if you're not used to working with the small tinsel, maybe you go three and a half. Uh, and then any leftover material that you have, if you're following along in the classes at uh, Fly Tying for Beginners on Facebook, save, I'm, I'm not a big fan of saving material like this, to be honest with you, but save this, the, the leftover, uh, because when we get to the Copper John, you're gonna find a use for it. So next what we want to do is just take this material, bring it right along the side of the hook, and we're going to just slowly get it inside along the side. And we're going to start to put a few wraps in, and a couple tight ones, Oop. slipped out on me, and that'll happen. But I tuck it inside that bead so that we don't have to make a cut. Uh, on these small guys like this, there's just not a lot of room to cut. And the little bit of material that doesn't, or that you can't cut, I should say, can really get in your way. So there we go. So now I'm going to just work the material back. Again, touching turns, or close to touching turns. If you're not using um, Uni-Thread, uh, although Uni-Thread will lay out a little flatter, uh, don't be afraid to work your, your uh, open and closed techniques with your thread, meaning you, you, know, you spin it clockwise to open, or counterclockwise to open it, to the right to open it, to the left to close it into a rope. Uh, the, the flatter this thread is when you're building one of these little purty guns, the better off you are. Uh, if you're not sure, then just go with what you have and just make sure as you're wrapping, it's just even. That's, that's what you're looking for is even. Uh, a good underbody here makes all the difference in the world. So there we go. Now I've made my way up front. So I still got my little tag back here of the thread. I've still got my uh, tinsel here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tinsel. I'm going to kind of stretch it forward on the side so that I can roll it over the top and now around. If you take your tinsel from the back side and come over, and, you're, and if you've wrapped back too far, what you can do is catch this tail and have it start to bend down the back of the uh, the bend. Now you'll you'll notice if you're doing that, you know, because you'll you'll see something like this. You know, sorry, my fingers are getting in the way when that's happening, but you'll start to see the tail bend there, like that. You don't want that. Now I'm getting all getting all fouled up with my tag. And that'll happen too. If you got a little material clip or something, that'll work to keep the tag out of the way. The tag is going to be the rib. Also, you can uh, take these and spiral wrap it forward, like so. So you just have just a touch of flash going forward. Okay, but for what we're going to do, we're going to do it the harder way. <laughs> if you can do it this way, then you can do it all the other ways, no problem. Um, we're just going to get that tinsel flat along the side, coming forward. We're going to bring it from the front side, up and over, and around, leaving the tail and everything alone. Kind of the goal is to leave that tail 
untouched so that you'll have this just a little bit of a flapping motion when you're fishing it. And that's kind of the idea here. And so now we're going to just take this and kind of touching turns, start working it forward. If you have a little bit of gap in there, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yep, I think my camera paused there for a second. So let me back up again. Sorry, I've been filming videos for a while and I just got to notice that I'm running low on battery. So we're just going to start from the back side and uh, move forward. I'm sorry, from the front side. Let me just do it all over again right here so I don't have to shoot the video for like the fourth time. Sometimes shooting video is hard. You say the wrong thing or something backwards and you're like, oh, dude, I got to do it again because I'm going to mess everybody up. So we're going to bring the tinsel forward from the front side. We're going to just wrap it over. Now we're going to work this guy forward. That video paused. I'm so sorry. And we're just going to work this all the way up. Touching turns. If you got a little gap in there, don't worry about it. I just don't want to shoot the video again because literally I tried to include too much and it ended up being like 30 something minutes to tie a two minute fly and I was like, you know what, let's just do two videos so that I don't have to get bored. We're going to get to the front. I'm going to tie this off on top. I'm going to come from the lower. Uh, well, if I got straight down, I'm going to come from the upper, sorry, uh, back left to the lower front right. I'm going to do that twice. Keep some tension on it. Now I'm going to take that tensile, just move it directly to the back, and start wrapping directly back onto that tinsel to trap it, to kind of create that little V wedge that, I've, that I always talk about. We're, we're tying it in one way, turning it around, sending the material the other, and we're wrapping it in from both directions. When you do that, I mean, you, I mean you're just guaranteeing that you're trapping that material. Uh, and this works for a ton of materials. So now I can bring my fingernail clippers in, trim that out. Don't over tie here, and we're going to work our thread back to behind, right behind the bead. And you can put a few extra wraps in here. So we have to fill this little gap. Next, what we're going to do is get our thread. And we're going to start wrapping it forward. If it slides back and, you, uh, and it goes right to the tail, the first one, don't worry about it. It's just getting itself set. And we want to get two, uh, I'd say, or I'm sorry, I'd say three to four wraps up the body right here. Just like that. And when you now when you get to the front, what I do is I'll take my thread when it's sitting just on top like that. I'll bring it directly underneath. So we just came from the back side. I'm gonna bring it straight up top. I'm gonna come down to the front side and put two wraps on the front side. Now what that's done is it's automatically your with your thread just hanging here, you've automatically caught that in. Pull that forward. Now you can wrap over it a couple of times, and this thread here, your tag, is completely caught. You can do that with a host of materials too, by the way. And again, I'm going to fold that to the back, put a few more wraps in, and uh, I'll get my fingernail clippers, trim that out. Now all we got to do is just, we're going to add just a little bit of thread. Don't get crazy here. We're going to add a little bit of thread just to make sure the gap is filled in the back. Uh, of the bead so that to stop the bead from sliding around you can come right onto the bead just a little bit that's not a big deal just like so then what I'll do is I'll I'll wrap back so that I'm tying off in the back when you tie off up front it can be a real challenge so I'll just whip finish here towards the back I can work my way forward if you want to work your way forward you can do that you can leave it right in the back you don't have to get this super tight because we're going to glue it all. Boom. There you go. Uh, just, it takes a little practice. Uh, it's real easy to fray your thread right here on this last part. So it just takes a little practice. If you fray it a little bit, don't worry about it. Use your scissors, cut the little strands of uh, thread out or whatever. Real quickly, we're going to talk. Uh, 
wing case. And so on a lot of nymphs, you're going to have a little wing case that comes right off the back, right up front towards the head of the bug. So we're going to act like the hook eye right here is the, uh, is the head of the bug. Uh, the most popular way now to do it is just with a Sharpie. And, uh, you know, angle that. If you got if you got a rotary vise, just angle that the way you can see it the best. And we're just going to kind of do some black marking right over the top if it ever turns out. There we go. Just to kind of provide uh, uh, some darkness to show that there's uh, a wing case. Okay. If you've ever seen like a pheasant tail nymph or, you know, all kinds of nymphs, they've got some sort of wing case coming over the front. So use a Sharpie. I think the way that they actually did that at first was using some uh, just uh, some fingernail polish like a Sally Hansen or something like that. And you can totally do that too. We'll cover that in another video though. Uh, so there you go. That's how you tie a Pertigon. Now you do want to finish this fly off. Uh, the easy way to do it is just get some of your crazy glue crazy glue and you can just kind of glue this all together uh it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be pretty these flies are meant to be cheap they're meant to get down they're meant to be lost they're, that's i mean they're meant to catch fish that's uh you know when you're tying a fly like this you are talking about uh well when you're tying it yourself uh you're talking about you know maybe depending on your material maybe about 70 cents on the high end uh to tie one plus your time. If you get good at them, uh, you can tie one and seriously, I've seen guys time as fast as like uh, 45 seconds. Uh, on the long end, you know, five minutes. I mean, take your time, make it look, make it look halfway decent. So anyway, there you go. That's how you tie a basic Pertigan. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, like I said, a follow up video on uh, beads and materials for Pertigans because there's a ton of stuff that you can you can uh, use on these things uh, and it, I actually I tried to do it the <laughs> first few times and I was like dude 35 minutes to tie a two minute fly is just a bit much so I'm going to do a separate video on that so make sure you check that out uh, if you like the video uh, give it a thumbs up uh, please subscribe and share uh, also if you like this video uh, make sure you click the button uh, or the bell, I'm sorry, click the bell so you can get notified when we when I have new videos coming out. Uh, if you're seeing this and you're not a part of Fly Tying for Beginners at Facebook, I invite you to do so. Uh, all you got to do is answer three of the four questions um, and you're in. So uh, get in, get involved, and uh, we'd love to have you there as well. So uh, other than that, that's how you tie a basic Pertigan fly. And uh, happy tying, everybody. We'll see you later.